What's up guys, it is Lewis and we are back with another episode of Retying the Knot. Today we've got Killers Like Quiet and it is the longest track on this record. If we combine all the last few songs together, it'll still be shorter than this because it has like it's 10 minutes and 51 seconds long. I really don't know if it's like an it has an intro like Iowa has or what Slipknot has the first song in this. But yeah, let's hope this turns out to be good. And I'm sorry if this piece of shit light wants to overexpose me. I've tried to record this like five times today and I keep on yelling at me and deleting the footage. Um, so if it happens, just know that I'm annoyed as much as you are. Um, it almost did it. Um, let's just get get into it. <sighs> Don't know what to expect. Hopefully it turns out to be a good, good song. Because it has one of the... Well, every song is least views that from what I know. Just so... Just, yeah. Press play. Ooh. Ooh. Dun -dun -dun -dun. That's the floor, Tom. Then you have... It kind of sounds like a triangle. And New York's chord. Keeps on cutting out. Has that? It has a tool feel. Is this? Are you sure it's not a tool track? <laughs> it sounds very tool. I haven't heard a guitar yet. It's open bass and drums, and like, ooh, what's happening? Ooh, even more tool sounding. This is one of those tracks where you just have to listen, not just put on the background, but you need to listen. I, I can easily tell they had just fun adding in different like percussion things, because like here like a tambourine. A um one of those shaky things. That's not a maraca, I like those weird it's a weird bead thing.
Ooh. The Tom hit along with just the open. That's headbang worthy. Back to the intro base with the tool. Like I can just easily imagine Danny Carey just jumping in in a sit in a slipknot set to play this with them. All we need is the fucking gong he uses. This kinda sounds like an interlude that was made into a long song. And we're already halfway through. I don't know if something heavy is gonna happen. I'll be fine if it's just this the entire time. Or if it just stops and adds in just a heavy screaming vocal. I do apologize for that. They're that simple, just ride. Hitting it that harder. It's the same thing before, but with the screens. Okay. Ooh. The ambience with the echoes. Ooh. Sounds like the gates of hell. That's pitch shifted, definitely. Ooh. Okay, Joey. Calm down, man. <laughs> Doesn't fit at all. But it is appreciated. Kind of like a like a cultist feel to it. I can imagine this just fading out for like three min whole minutes.
Ooh. Is, is that like Sean just hitting a different drum? Because it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sound like Joey can do just do that and just do a random drum with a different hand. Oh, it's just two takes of drums. That could also be the case. But I don't imagine they could easily play this live. <laughs> And it can't be a set opener or a closer. Ooh. Sounds like fucking like phantoms. That's horrifying actually. Coming to the end of the track. And it just cuts off. Right there. Just cut just cuts off. Fat no words can describe that. It just it it's just an overarching theme spread out to nearly eleven minutes. It has the high points there are the tool sounding like bass and drums for me, but then throughout it has just a and it just comes in whenever he feels like it to shout some lyrics because it's barely any lyrics in this compared to um, what it is what the hell long it is um, that riff that is the practically in the entire song then at the end when he does scream well not at the end like at the seven minute mark when he do when Anders does scream it's just with um, the open it just it's not palm muted like it was before which made it a bit Fear. It was. It's also. I liked how that riff. I said it here whilst I was listening listening to it, where the 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 first tom lands on with. Well, I should say the first guitar strum lands on the tom. I do like that. I like how. I like. I like guitar, at least portions of guitar riffs, that land alongside a drum. Thing, not the entire riff, like, like the um, like an injustice for all, like da na na na, ba ba boom. Not that. I mean, just having it land like one drum thing on an open note at the end of a riff or at the beginning of a riff. That's what. That's a lot of songs that I listen to have that in some portion. Um. It, uh, other than that, there's nothing really to comment on. It's, it's something you can't just sit down and listen to. Well, I should say you can't down, can't can't sit down just to put it on in the background and whilst do work. You just have to pay attention to it because you you think it's rising, but it's at the same level with a dip that goes high then just goes onwards which made it I think more enjoyable in that regard because if it went higher I after the screamy portion with like a faster riff it would have ruined the song but I would have welcomed it at the same time if that makes any sense meaning by Anders Kills Are Quiet is about a pale one which is about a garo that has been embraced by the kindred it could be that could mean a lot of things. Pal One, I know, is what the original name for the band was. Pale Ones. Um, and I th a lot of these songs are based off of that uh, RPG game that I talked about earlier. Werewolf the Apocalypse, I think. This is the first version of Iowa. Yeah, it, it does have that feel, but with Iowa, 
it has more or less an intro than a solid song, but this was just a long intro to a solid song. Right? No, a long intro that is a solid song, I should say. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to what I was saying. And even though this isn't the last track, I'll be reacting to this record. This is the last song on the official record. The last two songs on this record that I'm going to be reacting to are the bonus song and the one that was released years after this was even dropped. Someone says they wish this song was about Craig. <laughs> Craig is known as the killer or the silent one because he never talks. He only talks a couple of times and people think he's like, what the fuck was that? Corey has a lot of interviews about why the fuck Craig doesn't talk, like whether he, be, he was a serial killer or he just doesn't like talking or he's a mute but he just fuck, doesn't fucking talk and I can understand it being someone famous not me being someone why did why that sound like that I mean for someone being famous and being an introvert at the same time it must be rough we, I know Craig and Jim are both introverts so they don't really feel like they can be a famous rock star I know Jim says that and about Craig that's why Craig is like a pinhead mask it's like, stay the fuck away from it. Iowa is a musical take on this self-titled album, and Iowa influenced by the album more so self-titled. Yeah, all of these are just demos that morphed into um, brand new songs, and I do agree with that. But other than that, a lot of these songs just, all these comments about these songs say that that just um, demos anyway. But a lot of these comments actually say that rest in peace Paul Gray and um, just talk about the record as a whole like in like long long comments a lot of people saying to picking up Gray and Iowa Gray Craig yeah Craig and uh, it being Iowa essentially not the album the song Iowa because the song Iowa my fucking god when I didn't see it live but when I saw videos of it live I saw I think it was a Mick coming to Corey to hug him after he vocally sang it because just singing that song would just bring up memories of how they recorded Iowa for I know for a fact they like like Corey was in a bathtub cutting himself and that's as soon as he did that he was recording songs that's why people compare Corey's vocals on self-titled and Iowa to just be him screaming and not singing or like screaming it in like a musical sense it's just him shouting and yelling that's what I mean by screaming not yeah this it, it, not really much you can say about this it's just it's something that they can just put on as like an intro to a set in the background then play like something heavy um or have it as like a song that gets played before the encore happens that's where I think this would actually either fit if they were to release this song officially. Um, but it technically is Iowa, so not, they probably can't. Um, and besides, Anders, yeah, Anders wrote this majorly, the lyrics wise. I don't know about the instrumental. Because the instrumental is either Sean, the guitarist, Joey. And Paul, yeah, Paul shined out for me in this in this song. Yeah, and that being said, yeah, my name has been Lewis, and this has been Killers Are Quiet by Slipknot. There's only two more tracks on this, uh, well, one more with being the hidden track, then uh, another one which is a different track, in altogether. Um, tell me what you think about this song in the comments below. Tell me anything I need to know about it, or that I could want to know about. It. Um, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> See ya.